Hey there, this is Tiff and welcome to the Tiffany Micah podcast. What we do here is we solve your problems so that you're out there working on achieving your big dreams and big goals. So when you listen to these episodes, if you can do me a favor, take a screenshot of the episode that you're actually listening to, share it on social media and share it with your friends with hashtag potential with tip so that I can give you a shout out and really thank you for listening because I'd really appreciate it. Hey there, this is Tiff from Tiffany Micah Podcast and welcome to today's episode. So here we are, we've got another bloodline code that I want to share with you. Now this one is massive for me, loyalty, unswerving loyalty. Loyalty is absolutely huge for me. It's so, so important. And the reason for that is, is that I'm, you know, I'm I'm as loyal as what a puppy dog is, you know, what a, like a doggy is with their owner. Um, and I respect, and I respect everyone until the trust is broken. So you will get unswerving loyalty from me. Um, and you may be that way yourself until the trust is broken. And the thing is, is once I have lost the trust, to be honest, I'm not going to be loyal to you. And, and how can that be? And how I see that is that you've betrayed the trust that I've given to you and I'll be very wary of you. And, you know, my husband, a lovely guy, he's, but he believes I hold grudges and I don't hold grudges. I just won't uh, go down that path of once you've broken the trust, once you've broken the loyalty, then we're done, right? And that And that's what this code is so important to have that unswerving loyalty, not only to someone, you know, other than you, well, someone else, I want you to have unswerving loyalty to yourself, right? I want you to be able to trust yourself. I want you to be able to not let yourself down, right? I want you to be able to not break the trust with you, right? I want you to be able to respect yourself, So what is loyalty defined as? Well, loyalty is defined as giving or showing firm and constant support or an allegiance to a person or institution. So, But I also don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying here either. So if you're mixing up with, if you're mixing with a person who is untrustworthy or is abusive to you in any way, shape or form. And what I mean by that is like they're uh, showing emotional abuse towards you, mental abuse, physical abuse in some form. And you must, and you believe that you must be loyal to them. Then this is not what I'm talking about. There are other elements going on here and and if this is actually happening to you in the sense of your um, someone is abusive towards you, you don't have to be loyal to them. But I'm not an expert in this area, so please get advice, please get help like from a counsellor or psychologist who deals in this area. Uh, This is not my area of expertise. I've lived it. I've gone through the emotional and mental abuse and the physical abuse from from someone in my life from from my past and uh, I was always very loyal to them no matter what, no matter how they treated me and so on and this is, is not the way to live. So if this is going on for you, even though this is not what I'm talking about in this bloodline code, I'm just going off on a tangent right now, but if this is going on for you, please get advice and please get help um, in this area because uh, this is not right, okay? So what I want to talk to you though today about is really the bloodline code, unswerving loyalty and what it actually means. So with this bloodline code, unswerving, unswerving loyalty, it's being loyal to yourself and your beliefs, 
yet you are open, right? You are open to learning, you are open to improving, you are open to new ideas, you are trustworthy, you have a sense of duty for yourself, your coach, your team and your family, but for yourself. You are respectful of yourself, right? You're mindful of the respect that you have for yourself. You are gracious towards your opposition, your coach and their support network, right? Your support network, their support network. And you praise homage to the work that must be done to accomplish the goals, right? So you are loyal to the work that needs to be done to accomplish the goals. So what are the main points here? Well, the main points here are, number one, being loyal to yourself. Number two, being loyal to your beliefs. Number three, trusting yourself. Number four, having a sense of duty, right? You have a moral obligation to look after you. And this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier. If there's things that are not right going on in your life, you have a moral obligation to look after you. Number five, respect yourself. Number six, respect all those around you. And number seven, recognize that work must be done to accomplish the goals. It doesn't magically appear. So we need to make sure that we're really um, got things in place with and have this understanding of what the main points are here in our unswerving loyalty. So let's break this down. I wanted to break this down for you so that you could have a really good and clear understanding of this. So being loyal to yourself, well, what does that mean? Well, you have your dreams, you have your goals, you are de- dedicated to accomplishing your dreams, you are dedicated to accomplishing your goals, you devote time and effort towards accomplishing your goals and you're the you're so kind to yourself you speak to yourself respectfully you never put yourself down you take the time to look after yourself you take the time to look after your mind your body your health right you've you've got to really truly love who you are and have the utmost respect for yourself and I will tell you that in my years uh, pursuing a ten- professional tennis career when I was a kid, and I mean kid like, you know, 19, 20, because um, when I look back now, I, I was a kid at that at that point, but a junior pursuing a tennis career, uh, I didn't, I wasn't loyal to me, I didn't respect me, I didn't take the time to look after my mind and my my body in the sense of my health, yeah, but really I didn't respect myself and I didn't love me. And we want to make sure that, you know, for you to have this unswerving loyalty, you've got to be loyal to you. You've got to look after you. You're number one because if you don't look after you, who else is going to look after you? No one. You are your responsibility. Number two, being loyal to your beliefs. If you have respect for yourself, because if you don't, no one else will. If you love yourself, because if you don't, no one else will. And if you believe 100% you of you, like 100% in you, so that's that complete conviction I was talking about in the bloodline in a bloodline code, previous bloodline code. Then you must be loyal to your beliefs. And I'm talking about the beliefs that will expand and grow you, not the beliefs that will hold you back. So if you walk around and you're saying, oh, I'm so bad at this and I'm awful at that and I can't compete in tournaments because I fall apart, then guess what? These beliefs are the kind of beliefs that you don't want to be loyal to. Because what we're talking about here is complete conviction. What I've spoken to you about in a previous bloodline code, having that complete conviction. And what that means is complete, utter belief in you. And this is what we need and this is what we require here. You believe you can accomplish your dream. You believe that you have what it takes. You believe you are efficient, right? You believe that you're an efficient machine. You believe that you strive for mastery. You become the master of your craft. You believe that you are the champion and you work on becoming that champion every single day. That's what I mean by being loyal to your beliefs. 
right? So we need to be loyal to ourselves. Number three, trusting yourself. Now, trust is huge. And what is trust? Trust is having the confidence, the faith, the belief, the certainty, the assurance, the reliance that it will work for you. That's what trust is. So you trust the decisions you make. You trust the work that you do. You trust the effort you make is not wasted. You trust that even if you make a mistake, there is a lesson in the learning there. Complete trust. You are the one who lives with you. You have to be comfortable with who you are and be confident and certain that the decisions that you make are the right ones. Because if there is doubt, there is a lack of trust. And I can tell you, and I'll share like what I mean by that is having that trust in you. Something very simple. When I was learning to play golf and I was on a particular hole, I was playing at Coffs Harbour Golf Club. So if you've never been to Coffs Harbour, it's a great part of the world. I was at Coffs Harbour Golf Club is where I was learning a lot of how to play golf and so on. And I was on this particular hole and I remember, and it was in the back, it was one of the holes between 19 and 27 because there's 27 holes there. But it was one of those back holes and I remember standing over the ball and I had an argument with myself and I said, Tiff, don't make a mistake, don't stuff this up, don't do this. And I was having an argument with myself and I went, you know what, let's step away for a second. What's going on here? And this is this was my aha moment that made everything different, right? It changed everything. And what I did was I went, you know what, you're giving yourself such a hard time. Stop stuffing this up. Oh, you're going to make a mistake. Oh, that'd be right. You know, you haven't got your line right. All of these things that were going on, you don't trust your swing, da 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 right? And what I decided in that moment was, you know what? I'm going to trust the decision I make. I'm going to trust where I decide to hit this ball. I'm going to trust my swing and I'm just going to do the best that I can in this moment because I trust me. And you know what happened? I actually hit the ball onto the green, which was incredibly exciting, but it proved to me that if I trusted me that I could produce whatever it is that I needed to produce in that moment. I trusted the decision that I made. Even if I made a mistake in that, that was okay. But I decided that I was going to trust me. And that was the thing that shifted everything in my life from that moment forward. So it didn't only happen in the golf side of things, in the sport, it happened with everything. And I started to trust the decisions. I was in a really bad relationship at that time as well. And I was like, you know what, I've got to make a change here. Things are not working here. It's not, it's not benefiting me because I didn't respect me. So then I was with someone who didn't have respect for me. So in that moment, making that decision to learn to trust me changed everything. Changed everything. Number four, have a sense of duty. And what I mean by this is having that moral obligation to look after you. So what I mean here is looking after you in every possible way. It's like I've spoken about just before. Treat yourself with respect. Pursue your goals and dreams. You have every opportunity to pursue your goals and dreams. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't. Right? You have a sense of duty to do this for you. Look after your body. Look after the fitness element. Look after the food that you eat, right, that you put into your body. Look after your body. That self-care, stretching, yoga, meditation, time out, time for you. Look after your mental health. Look after your emotional health. Incredibly important. I'm speaking from experience here. Know and understand that if you have the respect you deserve to treat yourself, then others will do the same, right? What you see out in the world of how people treat you is how you think about you. So if you think of yourself as nothing, not worth anything, 
you're worthless, you don't deserve, then that's the type of people that you end up attracting into your life. I had that. I didn't respect me. I had no respect for me. I attracted such the wrong people into my life. And I allowed them to treat me poorly because I didn't respect me, because I didn't think much of me. And we we don't want to have this here. We want to make sure that we have that sense of duty, that moral obligation that you have to look after yourself. Okay, you have to look after yourself. Because when I was in that, in that point in my life, when I was telling myself I was a failure, I was telling myself I wasn't good enough, I re- attracted such the bad, bad and wrong people into my life. And I didn't look after my body. I didn't look after my mental health. I didn't look after my emotional health. I allowed them to control me because I didn't think I was deserving. Right? So it's so important that we have to look after ourselves respect you okay number five respecting all of those around you when you have respect for yourself you find that you have respect for others around you people around you you should respect right your parents they're your support network your siblings they're part of your family they're part of your life there's also your support network your coach They are here to help you become the athlete that you want to become. Your teammates, having the respect for your teammates is incredibly important because everyone has a role to play. Fans, if you've got fans, respect your fans. You may have some fans, right? Respect them. Opponents, especially when you get beaten, this is because this is tough. When you get beaten, just remember all that they did today. All that they did today was that they played better than you and that was just one performance. So respect that performance and learn from that performance. The umpires and officials, they're doing the best that they can in that moment to to referee or umpire whatever sport it is that you play. Thank them for doing the job, right? It's being respectful. Number six, recognize that work must be done to accomplish the goals. And this is where people are all looking for the miracles without the effort. I come across this so much as everyone's looking for those miracles because we're living in a society now where everything has to be done now. But I will tell you, if you actually look at sport, it doesn't happen any quicker. You've still got to go and learn how to do it. You've still got to go and learn how to do the skills. You've still got to go and pay your dues, so to speak, and spend the time in learning how to do that. Like me with skiing, I discovered skiing two years ago. I've wanted to ski for, gosh, since I was a kid, I've wanted to learn how to ski, and I've only got to it two years ago. Now I've got to do the hard yards with it. Didn't get to go last year. Been this year, can't wait to go again. I'm planning on going again soon. But I have to learn the skills. I have to give the time. I have to respect the time that it needs to learn. It doesn't just happen yesterday. It doesn't happen by the click of a finger. And there's so many people that I've worked with over the years expecting things to happen just because they show up. And I always say about showing up is half the battle, but just showing up is not the answer. There has to be more that has to be done just by showing up, right? Just by showing. I think I've stuffed that up the way I've said that. But there has to be more done than just showing up. And I've worked with so many golfers over the, especially over the last 10 years, because I've been teaching golf, especially over the last 10 years. And they believe if they go and play golf, and that is just get on the course and play competition. That's where the improvement happens. And you know what? Some of the improvement happens there. Some of that happens in performance, but not a lot because it's the work that you actually do off the golf course. It's the work that you do off the field. It's the work that you do off the court that contributes to the success that you want because it's the hours of working on getting the technique right. I've talked about in the Bloodline Code of Strive for Mastery. 
It's the hours of working on your mindset for your sport. It's the hours of working on your fitness for your sport. It's the hours of working on your body, right? Fueling it with the right food. It's the hours of dedication on improving you, learning and growing. This is not a miracle. This is blood, sweat, and you know what? You bet, tears, right? Blood, sweat, and tears. So you must respect the work effort that is required to accomplish your goals and your dreams. Okay, and that's really what the bloodline code unswerving loyalty really means. So I'm going to read out the main points for you again so you have this in your head that you need to have this in place for unswerving loyalty. But not only that, I want you to take the notes down and I want you to build that respect in you. So number one is being loyal to yourself. Number two is being loyal to your beliefs. Number three is trusting yourself. Number four is having a sense of duty, that moral obligation to look after you. Number five is respecting yourself. Number six is respecting all of those around you. And number seven is recognizing that the work must be done to accomplish the goals, right? So it doesn't magically appear. That's what we need in place for unswerving loyalty. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode and this bloodline code. I'd love it if you could share with me what you like best about what you heard today. If uh, you have a question, come and visit my site, tiffany micacom On the first page, on the home page, you'll see um, what's holding you back. You can ask me a question so that I will answer it for you. I've got a new segment coming up very soon, Ask Tiff, so I look forward to answering those questions that you have for me and I will lay out a plan for you on the podcast so that you can get to work and start solving those problems. Also, if you have not yet downloaded the number one deadly mistake that athletes make, make sure you go to my site as well, tiffany mica that's M-I-K-A.com. Go to that site, download the number one deadly mistake athletes make. I don't want this to be you and make sure you get to work on that because I'll show you exactly how to build that, what that deadly mistake is, how to eradicate that. So I'd love it if you could share with me once again what you like best about what you heard today. If you've got friends that you know that would benefit from these episodes, I'd really appreciate that if you could share these episodes with your friends. So I hope you have an absolutely awesome day. I want you to dream big, believe in you, go after your dreams. Take care. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening today. If you have any questions about the frustrations that you're actually going through right now, come over and visit my site, tiffany micacom and you will see on the home page I've set up Ask Tiff. Now, what Ask Tiff is, is this is where you can ask me a question and I will record an episode for you on how to solve that frustration or those frustrations you're actually going through so that we can get the problem solved for you so that you're actually out there achieving your big dreams and goals. So if you want me to mention your name in the episode, happy to do so. If you don't, I can keep it anonymous. It's fine by me. But make sure you go over and and go to the Ask Tiff on the homepage of my website. If you've just got 30 seconds to spare, I'd also appreciate if you could leave a five-star review wherever you hear these episodes. And remember, take a screenshot, add the hashtag potential with Tiff so that I can give you a shout out for sharing these episodes on social media. I'd really appreciate it. And remember this, always, always, always dream big, believe in you and go after your dreams.